David Williams here from the Electronic Engineering Technology Department at Okanagan College and this video is about transistor characteristic curves. A transistor characteristic curve it's just a it's just a fancy term to describe the relationships between the voltage between the collector and the emitter and the current through the collector as well as integrating the current into the base into that equal into that uh, picture as well. Now on the right hand side here you can see a characteristic curve which is the relationship between the collector and emitter voltage and the collector current for several different base currents and I'm going to get into the details of how this curve is drawn and what kind of information that curve can tell you. So I'm going to start off here drawing a portion of a simple little transistor circuit. So we've got a voltage source here and I'm going to draw an arrow through it here to designate that it's variable. And that voltage source is connected through a resistor to the base of the transistor. And I'm going to call this voltage here VBB and I'm going to give this resistor here a value. It's going to be 10 kilo ohms. Now one thing we know about this circuit is that as long as VBB is a large enough voltage to overcome this base emitter voltage drop here, as long as it's able to overcome that 0.7 volts between this across this PN junction, that there will be 0.7 volts across the PN junction there, and we'll have some kind of some amount of base current going into into the base, and the value of the base current will be whatever VBB is set to minus the voltage between the base and the emitter divided by the resistance that that voltage is applied across the base the base resistance there so B, VBB is going to be something variable but that base emitter voltage is going to be approximately a constant 0.7 volts and the and the resistor at the base is 10 kilo ohms I just shifted it, shifted the circuit diagram down a little bit because I'm going to draw the rest of the circuit here. So collect, connected on the collector here, I've got another resistor connected to another voltage source. I'll call this voltage source VCC. I'm not going to give a value to RC yet. But I'm going to do a I am going to do a couple of things here. Let's say I've got a voltmeter connected between the collector and the emitter. So this is measuring my collector emitter voltage. And I've also got a an ammeter in here. I'm just going to delete a little or erase a little bit and draw in an ammeter here to measure the collector current. So what all this is showing me or showing us is a setup to perform some tests to form a, to perform an experiment to create the transistor characteristic curve. And I'm going to I'm going to create the curve for one particular value of the base current. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set VBB to some voltage 1.1 volt. What this means is my I can figure out what my IB is going to be. My IB will be 1.1 volts minus the 0.7 volt drop across the base emitter junction all divided by the resistance that that voltage is applied across the base resistor and this gives me a current, a base current of 40 microamp. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set VCC to 0 volts, then start to increase it. And as I am increasing it, I want to measure the collector current, and at the same time, 
measure the voltage across the collector and the emitter. Now these two pieces of information along with the base current is what's creating one point on my transistor characteristic curve or one I guess one curve of my transistor characteristic curve. And as we'll see there's actually a set of curves that can be created. So if I was to plot these two things out, my collector current and my collector emitter voltage, with the base current set to 40 microamps, as I start to slowly increase VCC, what I will find is my VCE will start to increase and my collector current will start to increase. Looking something like this. And then I'm going to reach a point where the collector current does not increase much anymore. In fact, as I increase VCE, ideally that, that collector current should not change at all. And what I have is one collector, one transistor characteristic curve with these pieces of information. The collector current, the collector emitter voltage as the collector current, and the, well, the relationship between the collector current and the collector emitter voltage at some particular value of the base current. And at this point where, it, where the, the, um, the collector current starts to level off, that is a, in this, for this particular characteristic, uh, this particular transistor, let's say that point was at 4 milliamps. Now I could repeat this with a different value for VBB, which will give me a different value for IB and same idea set my VCC to zero and then start increasing it measure the collector current and the collector emitter voltage as I do that so I might do the same sort of thing but for a value way down here so let's say this value was IB of 5 microamps which gave me a point along here of 0.5 milliamps and maybe I can do, I'll do another one here too. Um, let's say, get another curve, looking something like this. And please know this is not exactly to scale as I'm just drawing this by hand. So that point is 20 microamps. And the point where the collector current starts to flatten out is at 2 milliamps. And let's do one more. Let's do a higher, higher base current. So we get something like that as the collector, as the VCC increases, VCE continues to increase, but the collector current is going to stay at some value after after a point. And in this case, we've got we're using the test case of IB is the base current 75 microamps, and the at the point where the collector current flattens out is about 7.5 milliamps. As you may have noticed, the values that I chose for my base currents and the, the maximums that the collector currents reached for each individual base current was the same as the picture from the beginning of the video, so I'm just going to copy that picture in here. Now, one thing you should note is that I've, I have only picked four base currents, but I could pick any number of base currents. I could use 40 2 microamps, 44 microamps. I could do I could do all sorts of different different curves in here. And what I what it will what I'll end up with here is that this is a set of transistor characteristic curves. It tells me the information of about how the collector current changes as the collector emitter current voltage changes at different base currents. Now the first piece of information that I can pull out of this is the relationship between the base current and this maximum collector current that we get up to. And if we look at that relationship, the IC over IB, in this case it's equal to 7.5 milliamps over 75 microamps is 100. For this particular curve we have 4 milliamps over 40 microamps, which is also equal to 100. And for this curve, we have 2 milliamps over 20 microamps is 100, as well as this point, the, beta, the, the relationship, the ratio of collector current over base current is also 100. And all these numbers are the same for this ideal transistor, 
And this particular number is what you may have seen called the beta. So this is the, the beta value telling us one important characteristic of this particular transistor. Now one thing you should note, if this was a real transistor, these lines wouldn't be perfectly flat and we wouldn't end up with exactly the same value for every single one of these for every single one of these curves. It would vary a little bit. So beta is 100 for this transistor. A couple of other important pieces of information you can get, or a couple of important points, I should say, on this on this graph, occur at, at two, two different extremes. So extreme number one occurs when the base current is equal to zero. If the base current is equal to zero, then of course the collector, there can be no collector current. If you remember back to the way the transistor works, the base current, the, the biasing of that p-n junction is allowing the collector current to flow. So if we don't have any base current, you don't have any collector current. And if you don't have any collector current, there will be no voltage drop across RC. So the voltage at this point will be effectively the same as the voltage at this point. So your collector emitter voltage here is going to be the same as your source voltage, or in this case, I've, I'll call it VCC. Extreme point number two. This occurs at the other end. Let's say we have this, we again have this circuit set up and we start increasing this VBB voltage here. What's going to happen, of course, is that the base current is going to increase and it's just going to keep increasing as long as we're increasing the, the, the source voltage, this source voltage. There will be a point where the collector current is so much that the voltage drop across RC is equal to the voltage of VCC, or approximately equal to anyway, and the collector emitter voltage is equal to zero. So our, our limiting factor here is that the collector emitter voltage can't get any smaller than zero volts. Once the collector emitter voltage is at zero, it's not going to get any lower than that, and our collector current is going to be at the maximum. So in extreme case number two, we are increasing the base current to the point that VCE is about zero volts. At this point, the, the collector current is at its maximum. And we actually call this point the saturation, or IC sat, for the, collect, the saturation collector current. So this extreme point number two called saturation. Collector current can't get beyond the, it can't go and get any bigger. And this point, extreme point number one, is when we have no current in the circuit, the collector emitter voltage is at its maximum, which is VCC, and we call this cutoff because current is all cut, is cut off. Now here's an example of a circuit with its characteristic curve, and I want to, I want to determine what are the two extremes? What's my cutoff point and what's my saturation point? And so basically then I'm going to be adjusting VBB here to give me that cutoff point and that saturation point. So VBB, when it's equal to zero volts, of course there will be no base current, therefore there's no collector current, and the voltage across the collector emitter will be the maximum, in this case 12 volts. So that one extreme point, the cutoff, occurs when I see is equal to zero volts and VCE is equal to 12 volts for this particular circuit and on the characteristic curve here I can find that point. IC is zero so anywhere along the axis here and VCE of 12 so there's the there's the first extreme point. What about the other extreme point? Saturation. That's when VCE is equal to zero volts um, zero volts. Oops, up here I dead volts. That should of course be amps. So VCE is zero volts. IC in this particular case is going to be 12 volts over one kilo ohm. This, if, if VCE is zero volts, then that point is also at zero volt, zero volts with respect to ground. So 12 volts across the one kilo ohm resistor is equal to 12 milliamps. 
So where does that point fall on this on this transistor curve, this characteristic curve? So VCE of zero, so somewhere along this axis here, and IC of 12 milliamps. So that's actually 9, 10, 11, 12. That's actually way up here. Now here's the interesting thing. If I got if I have VBB and I set it to zero, that will put me at this point. And now as I increase VBB towards the point where it reaches saturation, what's going to happen is my operating condition, the operating condition meaning what value of IC and what value of VCE I have is going to vary and it's going to actually follow along a line directly between the cutoff point here and the saturation point way up here. And let's see how good of a straight line I can draw here. It's going to follow this line approximately between cutoff and saturation. So as VBB changes, my operating point of that transistor must fall somewhere along this line here. And this particular line here is called the DC load line. So that's all I want to say about transistor characteristic curves. We are going to use them in the future when we're analyzing DC operating conditions of transistor circuits. I hope you learned a little bit about transistor characteristic curves, and I will see you in the next video.